Josh Gad, more like I'm Josh Glad this didn't get a second season. Welcome to Bottle Welcome Episodes, to Bottle everybody. Bottle Episodes. Welcome to Bottle Episodes. My name is David Piccolomini. I'm Daniel Crow, noted Josh Gad fan. And this week we're joined by... Jake Silverman. Thanks for having me, boys. It's good to be here in Delaware. <laughs> yeah, scenic Delaware, the Delaware studio. The Delaware studio, yes. You guys have many locations, but it's an honor to be here in the Delaware studio. <laughs> yeah, I think we recorded this in like six locations at this point. That's good. You guys are like a terrorist cell moving around. Much like uh, Josh Gad for about... <laughs> Three years in the early 2010s, he was popping up everywhere. <laughs> yes, terrorizing the big screen, the stage, and the small screen yeah, all you, at once. You two are both in agreement on how much you hate this guy. I this is I a, just don't have an opinion on him really. I didn't even really remember him until he did this show. But really, true, Josh. Like, yeah, I don't know. But he was David was talking about what we were watching. He was very upset about Josh, and now you are too. <laughs> true, Josh Gad story. I have so this is like circa 2014 or whatever. Whenever he was doing that show on fx with billy crystal I, oh yeah yeah was so, that bad too i, I never watched i it. never watched so it. i'm in the lower east side and i walk into a bodega and then some other guy walks into the bodega and goes wow josh gad just walked by and the guy behind the counter is like who's josh gad and you can see a poster for that billy crystal show from, from the, the bodega, bodega. <laughs> and the guy points he's like the guy that's not billy crystal the bodega guy leans over the counter and looks he goes oh I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's from the com- the show you're talking about is the comedian. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, is it about stand up? Sort. I don't. It was like it was. Uh, Billy Crystal was getting an. It's kind of like hacks. Oh, okay. Like a famous comic and then a, an apprentice yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Feels like they should probably switch titles based on how much people liked the shows. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, oh, by the way, the uh, pi- uh, this is Bottle Episodes, where we watch the pilot of uh, a poorly rated show, and then we watch the top rated episode on IMDb to see if it got any better. And this week, we're doing 1600 Pen. Yeah. Which was created by Josh Gad and two other people. Yes. And I don't know if you need three people to go, what if we made a parody of The West Wing? That's a two-person max pitch. Well, do you know what else is on there? John Lovett from Love It or Leave It. Uh, it's uh he's the um i'm pretty sure this is the same guy is he's the podcast guy isn't he there's more than one podcast guy so you will need to be more specific there's oh there's my i might be thinking it's a different guy then it's i thought there's uh the podcast there is uh, a guy there is a podcast called love it or leave it the like it's like a political but po- i figured he, i wouldn't have to go this far with you i figured you would know it That's he's why like yeah I, uh, I think he worked in the obama administration yeah but i don't know if he's an actor no but he's a writer Oh, oh, he wrote the thing? He wrote I the show? I think this is... I think it's the same... Yeah, John Lovett, uh, former Obama speechwriter. Yes. And then did he also write this show? I... Like, that's what... I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, he was a producer on the newsroom. Uh, Good for him, man. No, maybe it's a different John Lovett. <laughs> How many John Lovett's do we fucking need? Well, we have also a plural, John Lovett's. Yes. Yeah. So there's... Comedian. Yeah. Actor. Hack. <laughs> this is a callback to the comedian yes yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, I have no actual opinion on mr john lovitz i will tell you uh this was years and years ago um when i was just like a host at the in portland at the helium and i asked the manager i was like who's the worst comic you've worked with and she without hesitation goes john lovitz <laughs> <laughs> all right well <laughs> so uh not even in talent not not on stage like as a guy oh man she was just like john levitt's by far was the hardest guy i've ever had to work with wow yeah like and she just snapped to it so she knew she had her answer on the top that of her was, head yeah he he made an impression and a bad one of all people to be a critic about <laughs> yeah very weird john levitt stinks yeah. you ever hear you ever talk to com- comedy club managers and ask them about like i always like doing that if i kind of get to know them well enough through a weekend i'll be like so like it's saturday night let me get a little dirt and it's fun to hear those stories of who they absolutely hated yeah that's so i should do that more um it's only if you kind of get a good relationship well, course, going with obviously. them but like if you did well during the weekend and then you know you, you know they got the photos on the wall you're like which one of these guys sucks and they'll be like let me tell you about this fucking guy right here i love it yeah oh anyway they- i'm willing to bet a lot of people had similar experiences on set with josh gad <laughs> <laughs> because he was everywhere for like three four years and then nowhere which tells so me he I, burned a lot of bridges. I only knew him. I saw the original cast of Book um, of Mormon. Book of Mormon. So he was in that. 
Yeah. And then I did not know he was so big. I mean, he had a lot of TV shows. He had, he had, a lot had of this, and then he had... None of them ever went anywhere. He's also Olaf in Frozen. He's the snowman. Oh, wow. That is, that's a huge win. I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's, that's a, a win. Yeah. Oh, he is, he's around. He's Chuck, around. He's also uh, voice acting was a lot of, he would get a lot of voice acting stuff. Okay. After. But right. Also like uh, the wedding ringer with Kevin Hart. Oh, yeah. They were trying to really make him a star for a time. And he just didn't, the America People rejected don't him. Like, it's a weird thing where I'm watching the show. I'm like, I recognize that he is doing everything right for comedic purposes, but I do not I like don't him. like it. Huh. I think I don't like it. I he Josh he, adds a lot like truffle oil. Like you if you add more than like a little bit, it just overwhelms the whole dish and ruins it. I feel like he'd be one of the worst people to sit next to on a plane. Cause he would be like very boisterous. Yeah. And you're just and you're like, man, I'm just trying to get to Cincinnati. I need you to calm down. Yeah. Oh, he I could see him being very serious. I you could think? see him very like Yeah, because a lot of times those guys who are like wacky on stage are like so serious off stage. They got to prepare. An yeah. actor prepares, you They're know? keeping all their energy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's uh it's got to be it's got to be crazy to have that many opportunities and for it not to like blow up though. I mean, he's doing fine. He'll have money from being Olaf forever. Yeah, that's true. I mean, also, he's still in movies like Strays which just came out like and like uh he was in uh that TV show Wolf Like Me. Yeah. Okay. So, like, he's still getting work and stuff. Oh, he's yeah. He's not the lead anymore. Avenue 5. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He worked with Ianucci. That's... Ianucci can do better. <laughs> <laughs> he can do a lot better. Speaking of Ianucci, that is probably one of the reasons people hated this show so much. It debuted just after Veep. Really? Just, like, two months after. Oh, my oh, God. I was, so, I was wondering the timeline. Yeah, because that's what I was like, well, Veep must have blown... I mean, obviously, Veep did what this show was maybe trying to do. But much, much better. Yeah, and yeah. like, obviously, because this was an NBC show, I think. Mm -hmm. Veep obviously could be more edgy and do more stuff, but I was just thinking, like, so this was in 2000, this was during Obama. Yeah. It's weird watching a show like this now, mm -hmm. because since Obama, we have lost... Obama was kind of the last president and people were like, you know, it's like cool to respect the president. Like, <laughs> you know, people really liked Obama. They liked him as like a guy. Some really didn't. Some really didn't. Yeah. But like. But overall, as like a nation state. There and was like, in the media generally, like, like you know. Like his scandals were like the wrong color suit. Right. Yeah. What was, he was like a, it seemed like he was like a decent guy, right? Right. But now when you're watching this and you're like, oh, the little hijinks they were getting into in the show, you're like, bro, we just know that the presidents are horrible, evil people and they have horrible, evil families. <laughs> it's not, it's like weird to be like, oh, my kid can't, gra it's like, look, if this was real, Josh Gl Glad would have got into Harvard. He would have been done. He would have had his degree because they would have bought it. Like, it's just like, yeah. you're just like, I don't believe this for a second that the <laughs> president's son is like a fuck up. If he was a fuck up, they would have been like, yeah, you're either out of the family or we're paying for you not to look like a fuck up. We haven't actually explained what the show is. It's about like oh, the president yeah. living yeah. in the White House's family and they're wacky. But the opening scene is Josh Gad at college. Yes. We find out later he's been in college for seven years. Yes. Very much the Van Wilder of this show. <laughs> what a party animal. Um, and he's like, setting up a prank on a frat that's been bullying him right, and some like, other kids but the a better show than just a normal sitcom at the white house is the president's son at a college and yeah he sucks and he can do whatever he wants and he's got secret service as bullies for right him. yeah that's a more interesting take totally also but even then when you're watching it you're like there's no way he wouldn't be in the best frat yeah yeah, the president's kid. The president's he's kid. With nerds. Yeah, he's a he's a loser. Like, there's just <laughs> no fucking way. Like, people want access to the president. Yes, <laughs> they, they would they would want him in their frat immediately, even if he sucked. That See, that's actually, why it's a more interesting take. This guy that sucks but can glide through life, but he thinks he's great. Yeah, yeah. Rather than just him being at the White House, wherever he's like rolling their eyes at him. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, and then also there was just so many kids. There's too many kids to keep track of it. Yeah, we don't in need a the 22 two young, minute. Show, we don't need the two younger kids. You need the at two all. younger kids, and you have the stepmom angle, and you have the. I mean, that's a lot to go around. That's a lot yeah. of air, stage time to spread around. 
for yeah for a twenty two minute pickup that's Josh supposed to be Gett. about the president. Right. It's like and Josh Gad's hogging most of the time. He's hogging a lot of the time. Actually, I now just want to see this show where Josh Gad thinks he rules and you find out it's just secret service and other people around him just making his life work. It's the only explanation for how he has a career. Presumably he was a secret son of Obama. <laughs> Josh Gad is an industry plant. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think he's just he he's so specific. It strikes such a specific, specific chord with people that it's like uh he gets into that like if you can use him properly, there is a space for him. Like, he's kind of like Ken Jong, I feel like. I've seen Ken Jong work in m- way more things than I've seen Josh Gad work in. That's fair. And I feel like it's just it's like he also he's so like there is an unlikability there with him. I like, hope he doesn't hear this episode. Yeah, I feel like... Because maybe he's a nice guy in real life. But it is something where, like, because the energy he's putting out is annoying, unlikable energy. That's, like, the... And the character is... They're designing the character with that in mind. Yeah. But you're still supposed to kind of be on his side. But there's nothing redeeming about yeah. it. But that's what I'm saying. He sucks. He is, just sucked. Yeah, there's no, like... There's no reason to be on his side. Well, there's a weird moment later in this first episode where we're sort of supposed to be given... Like his good quality, which is he has a quote, he has a spark with people. He knows how to talk to people and get them. And his dad, the president says, I never had that. Your mom. How did you get elected president? <laughs> right. If people don't like you. How did you, how did you do that? Also, it's weird because it's uh, Bill. Which one? Pullman. Pullman. Okay. Yeah. We were trying to figure out if it was Pullman or Paxton. No, pa- no, not pa- it was Pullman because Pullman's the president in Independence Day. Yeah. Yes. So it's it, it is weird to have like Bill Pullman be like, wow, something I don't have that Josh Gad does. <laughs> You're like, what? It can't be. That's not negative screen presence. Is that what you're referring to, Bill? <laughs> His mom was probably like some type of special needs person. She's well. Look, we watched another show that we're gonna do an episode on <laughs> later, and you don't know what trap you just fell into. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and so yeah. So they bring him back, and then he's just at the White House. Causing hijinks. They're, like, also trying to... Also, it's, like, they're trying to... There's that thing where he is trying to do, like, a 30-second spot about teaching kids how to be safe from fires, you know? And... If anything, this guy should be doing a PSA about autism. Yes, 100%. But he's trying to... Hey, do you also have special interests? Yeah. Yeah, and that... And then, yeah, it causes this whole thing where... I don't know. It's just, I mean, I know it's supposed to be spoofy, but you're like, I feel like other, sh- like Veep, it's like, oh, some of this is believable, maybe, you know, or at least like in line of like, oh, it's it's more political. This is just like, there's just not hijinks happening at the White House. The there big- is no way that a chair sets on fire yeah. and gets thrown out. It's just kind of like, it's the wrong setting for all these little mm-hmm. pranks. The, one of the big things about Veep is the characters suck, but they're not annoying. They're bad people. Yes. But then they also have Julie Lee Dreyfus's daughter set up as a character and some other characters who, who show up to be like, you suck. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's no one to confront any of the characters in this show. Be like, you're annoying and I hate you. It's like the staff at the White House who have no power. Yeah. It's just like. But even well, there, they're not pointing out that they suck to their face. No. One and remember uh, you were I don't know if you remember this because you were kind of passing out but the <laughs> Josh Gad's handler is named Marshall Mathers for some uh, reason yeah. oh yeah and you Great were like job. why are they talking about Eminem I was like no I think the character's name in this show is Marshall Mathers for some reason it's Marshall Malloy oh he just kept calling him Marshall Mathers oh that was the, supposed to be a joke but we I don't think we had had his real name no set we don't up. know his name no. yet oh that's dumb yeah. Oh, it, this show, it, it is, it, I don't, I don't even fully know what they're, t- like, yeah, because you were, I think you're right about the benign deviation kind of thing of it. It's like the White House is too serious. Yeah. For these, like, silly hijinks. Right. Unless you're going almost, like, at a cartoony, like, uh, first kid. Like, yeah. Like, Sinbad level. Right. But then you're not doing an NBC sitcom. No, no, way, no. It's funnier if the cast is entirely the same, except Sinbad is the president. <laughs> <laughs> With no explanation for why he's a different color than all of his Whole kids. family. Yeah. Just telling Josh Gad he has a spark with people that Sinbad never yeah. did. Yeah. Sinbad is riffing his entire presidential <laughs> speech. He's yeah. not writing. He's not using any speechwriters. He's just going up there talking about baseball bats and whatever. Do you know, Sinbad's actually never lost an election. 
Well, he was a genie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And then there's the daughter. The daughter who gets knocked up. Yeah, she gets pregnant. And she's freaking out. And also, she has a beef with the stepmom, but we, in at least the two episodes we watched, we do not know what happened to her mom. It's, I, she's either dead somehow, I guess. She ran away to be with Sinbad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, she's, she's definitely pissed. dead. She's pissed that the stepmom is now first lady. Which, get over it. You're an adult. How You're much an is, adult and your dad is president. How like, much he's is not going to be a single guy. Yeah. How much does having a stepmom affect your day-to-day right. life? You got pregnant. You have other things to focus on. Yeah. Your stepmom, the first lady. Yeah. Who seems like a nice lady. Yeah, she seems nice. She, Try- out of all the characters, seems like she's like trying the most. Yeah. She seemed like fun to be around. Uh, and- Jenna Elfman. Yeah, from Dharma and Greg. Yeah. We yes. randomly mention Dharma and Greg a lot on this podcast, I feel like. We'll just get a passing mention quite a bit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, she gets knocked up by some like jock. Well, we don't meet him in the first episode. We do not. She's they didn't. Like, they didn't cast him or spend money on no. this guy in the pilot. <laughs> like, they weren't yeah, sure where it was gonna go. Yeah, They're like listen, if this doesn't, yeah, if this doesn't go to series, we don't want to like get someone's hopes up. Here's the thing about him being a dumb jock. This is a show about politics, and they're so unwilling to wade into anything political that they just made this guy a dumb jock. Rather than the exact opposite of her politically. Yeah. That's a better conflict. Right. But the, for a show about politics, it is so apolitical and yeah. toothless. A hundred percent. That that's one reason I find it hard to respect. Yeah. They literally, there's no political content at all. There well, is, I'd but it's a- like, I need to make a trade deal with South America. Right. Right. But that's not, I, yeah. I, yeah. There's no, there's no political, there's not political ramifications to the trade deal they're making with South America. Yeah. And they, the, the jokes, the throwaway jokes that they do have are so boring. Like, uh, they're playing tennis, uh, the, him and the Brazilian guy. And he's like, I'm going to beat you like you beat your Native American. Or what he says something like, I'm going to treat you like you treated your Native Americans. Yeah. And it's like, okay, sure. That's, wow. That's your, your big zing that he didn't even say to his face. He said it to himself under his breath as he's walking away. But then, yeah, so there's like three of those that he says to himself and the president doesn't hear. Yeah. But later he says one to the president's face and the president's like, this guy's got so many of these. Like, this is the first one you heard, yeah. dude. <laughs> He's just been hearing him whisper it under his breath yeah. the whole time. Well, I guess they did do a brief flashback to when they played Hialeah in Brazil. Yes. So and maybe he got he had, hit in the balls. Yeah. Maybe he did some of these in Brazil. Yeah. He's just good at shit talking. The yeah. Brazilian president, known for his shit talking. Truly, I would love to look up historical. Uh, times when world leaders actually played sport against each other i mean or at the very least high ally has got yeah, to be a very rare yeah. one <laughs> i don't think anyone's ever played high ally against I mean, each other first of all, an american president has never done that sport ever <laughs> um i would believe teddy roosevelt had and that's it was it invented when roosevelt was around this was a like- pretty old game yeah I think it was like a fad in the 60s and 70s. No, 1875. Yeah. 1875? Yeah. But was it in America? No. That's... But Teddy traveled, although he spent time in South America. Okay, so maybe he played it. Yeah. But do you think he played it against a president? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> but I think he would have played it at some point. Okay, okay. But he I want to know. athletic competition. Right, but I want to know. We can just turn this into a Teddy Roosevelt podcast if no one wants to talk about 1600 Ben. <laughs> I love the idea of we're like, let's talk about a better president yeah. than... <laughs> Then whoever, what is this guy's name actually? Oh, you're president? not gonna believe this. His name is actually Barack Obama. Oh, as well. damn. <laughs> yeah, that love it or leave uh, it guy. Gil Crest. Is he? Did they ever say if he's a Democrat or Republican? No. Even they don't even say his party because they want it to appeal to everybody. That is crazy. I wouldn't be surprised, but at some point he gives a speech and goes, "Now as a true moderate, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm the first, <laughs> first centrist uh, elected in American history." <laughs> Bill Part, uh, Bill Pullman pulled the Green Party out of obscurity. Yeah. That's yeah. why he's the pull man. Yeah, he... Uh, yeah, and like, I wonder too... I guess I don't know if he did it on the other episode, the, the episode we watched, but at the first one, I was wondering, like, are they going to do this at... Because he, like, at the end of the first episode, he wraps up with, like, a speech that's very just, like, when we work together, you know, anything yeah. is... Po- and I was like, is this going to be every episode where he, you know, it's like the way he they, they wraps end... it up with a speech. With a yeah. speech about some, like, life lesson that the episode was supposed to instill in people. 
I don't think they did that in the second I don't think, one. No, they didn't. It's, oh. But I was like, when we were watching the first, first, I was like, there's no fucking way that this is how this show ends. Every week is yeah. just him. Uh, and we all figured it out. And we all triumph together. Do, do you know what 1600 Pen is? It's, a, it's the sort of show that kids think all adults watch. Yeah. If like, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sophisticated. Yeah. I'm watching political shows. Yeah. And it's just, okay, yeah, hold on. I think it's fine. But, yeah. A lot of dogs here today. Yeah. A lot of dogs in the White House. A lot if you of catch dogs my in the White House. <laughs> roof, roof, baby. Roof, roof. Uh, uh, this is the sort of show that would have a Who Let the Dogs Out joke in it. Yes. 100%. The bark of terrible yeah, comedy yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they bust out Who Let the Dogs Out as a joke. Do you think they can afford the song for it? No, but they can afford Josh Gad singing it. <laughs> right. They don't you know need there's to a scene royalties. where Josh Gad has to rally his siblings to do something. He's like, he puts together a dance for who yeah. let the dogs out and they all do it in the Rose Garden. <laughs> this is that kind of show. Yeah, I would love to see more Secret Service interference in this show in general. Well, good news. They would be dancing in the garden with them. <laughs> yes, 100%. It's a, it's a flash mob, but just people, Secret Service members coming out of yeah. different hidden exp- uh enclaves it would have been fun. it would have been now again they couldn't have done this on nbc but and i didn't watch much of veep so i don't know like the whole thing but like having very over the top goofy hijinks but back played against very real visceral world events like josh gad trying to figure out israel palestine is something i would at least be more interested yeah. in like his little hijink scenarios, like we got to put them over here in these camps, and you're just like, all right, I'll I watch them some cookies. I'll watch, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're dropping cookies from an uh, Apache helicopter on Gaza right now. I would watch that. I would at least see that. Yeah, I'd be just glad to watch. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Rough. He's yeah. It it is. It, it's funny because we're like just trying to. I'm trying to think of like wh- anything else from the pilot that's even worth talking about. It, I mean, I think we covered almost the entire pilot. Formless. Yeah. I guess we forgot the one moment at the end where, um, the youngest daughter and son, who I guess are like a year apart in age. Yeah. They're like 13 and 12. They got into some sort of fight because. Oh the, right, I forgot. Because the boy likes some girl, and then the sister bullied him about it, and turns out she she's. A, a lesbian. lesbian for that girl. That's yes, why they got to fight. That. It's never addressed in the other episode we watched. No, that is the punchline. Simply that the little girl's a lesbian. Is that the whole joke? I don't think it was a joke. I think it was like, hey, hey look did- at how accepting the stepmom is. Because now the stepmom, I think, knows that the daughter is pregnant, and she knows that the other kid is a lesbian. Those are, I mean, that's like setting up for a sitcom. It's like, hey, listen, we've got a lesbian daughter and a pregnant daughter. Right. What's going to happen? You got to watch next week to find out. Yeah. Traditionally, what, but when what, I know someone who is going through an unexpected pregnancy, I'm like, a lot of laughs are coming. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be one of the funniest times in your life. Nothing funnier than a 13 year old lesbian, let me tell yeah. you. <laughs> Famously, a, a jovial comedic group, and also it's like, yeah, are you, you're gonna deal with this on an NBC sitcom. You're gonna really go you, that you way. You won't even tell us if the president's a Democrat. Yeah, yeah, because that that really colors how the rest of this, this <laughs> bit is gonna go. Is she getting sent to camp, or is she being trotted out for campaign events? It'd be funny if, like, the second episode, she's just not around. Just like, yeah, we found out, and uh, she's not really our kid anymore. Yeah. She's going to a DC public school now. Fuck her. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and then the military, the Brazilian stuff, just kind of. I for, how no, does, well, Josh Gad. Yo, yes, Josh Gad he uses I, his spark with people yes. to convince all the South Americans to vote with with his dad. Yes. Oh yeah. He makes a. He gets drunk with nine Central and South American world leaders, and he's like. Hey man, stand up to your bullies is basically the premise of his little rallying speech. He goes, "You guys have been pushed around by Brazil for too long." It's pretty much the same speech he gives at the start about that fraternity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then right, uh, that's good writing. No, and then they're just like, "You're right. We're fucked up, and we don't want to deal with Brazil anymore." And then, uh, then I do, they vote against him. I do love the idea of like that's like such a white guy fantasy. To be like, he's going to go talk to, like, the leaders of, like, Peru and Venezuela and be like, Brazil's your real enemy. Can I make a promise right now to all of our 
millions upon millions of listeners. Yeah. If you elect me president, I will appoint Josh Gad ambassador to Brazil. Wow. There you <laughs> go. I will do that. Hell you yeah. have my promise. That's the only thing I'm running on. Watch out. Josh Gad's going to get you elected. <laughs> Why would he want to be ambassador to Brazil of all things? You oh, that's would... a fun place to that be. Seems like a pretty great job. I've been to Brazil. It's a beautiful country. It's there's actual issues to work out if you're the ambassador to Brazil, though. Then, then like um, yeah, the ambassador to some no name like Monaco or yeah. something. Yeah, uh, then you're just living it up. Yeah. But how much power does an ambassador have? What are you really doing? You're going to meetings. You're, you're not. The, the, you're not the president. You have no authority. No, you're the representative in the country. Sure, but you're just like, hey, this is what Biden thinks we should do. Yeah, but there's like actual. This isn't going to be really funny for the podcast, but you might have to be like, hey, you need to stop deforesting the rainforest i'm sure he's like gonna that. get plenty of beach time is what i'm saying all right i think josh is hitting those beaches. also he'll be able to sing all the presidential decrees he that's yeah. a good point yeah. yeah dude he's gonna be doing cartwheels and wacky antics he'll be <laughs> hanging from a chandelier telling that guy please don't do another january 6th <laughs> josh gad i feel like is the sort of person that thought he could be the lead in home alone when he was 30 like <laughs> Kevin McAllister? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> he, you told, I feel like he was like, let's do a remake right now. Uh, but adult. No, no, he'd still be playing a kid. Oh, oh, he's a kid. He's a kid, but he's playing. He's like, I'm he's, eight. Yeah. I'm a fat, tall eight-year-old with a beard. Yeah. And I'm home alone. Yeah. I think there's two believes big, he could have done there's that. There's two guys here after me who are just my size. <laughs> it's like uh, Ben What's His Fuck in the Suicide movie. What? Uh, that it will make sense. That's a really uh, what, what's that musical that with uh Ben, what's his name? The he pl- Ben Platt, Dear Evan Hansen. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I, when he played the, Ben, the, what's his fucking the Suicide yeah. movie? I stand by that. <laughs> I was I was thinking to myself, okay, so Ben Affleck does cameo as Batman in Suicide Squad. <laughs> what's the angle here? No, Ben Platt play, play, played himself in high school. He played the high school kid. Yeah. At like 33. That's a pure gad move. <laughs> Stealing our boy's fucking yeah. thunder right there. <laughs> Stolen valor. <dude. laughs> Stolen, Stolen glad valor. <laughs> hey guys, if you're enjoying the episode, don't forget to rate and review and subscribe to the podcast. Also, follow me on Instagram at DPIC Comedy, Daniel at Daniel F. Crow, and Jake Silberman at The Comedian Jake. You can find Jake. He's touring all over. I linked his link tree in there. And then also check out his podcast, Hard Man, Soft Boy, and The Jake Silverman Show. Also, fun fact about this episode. When I picked this show, I definitely thought it was That's My Bush. Uh, And so I told people, I was like, oh, it's like a Bush era. They're making fun of that, politics and stuff. And then it's just a very banal sitcom about Josh Gad. So we went with it and did what we could. Uh, by the way, uh, just as an update, it was written by John Lovett, who's the Love It or Leave It podcast guy. He's the speechwriter for Clinton and Obama. Uh, <laughs> so that's why I was trying to figure out who that guy was. Okay. And anyway, uh, more confusing references as we get back into it. Uh, anyway, we should probably move on to the highest rated episode of the show. Episode nine. I think it's just called like bad game, date. No, it's oh. called game theory. Oh, game theory. Oh yeah, because yeah. the kid has the most generic looking game theory book ever. Yeah, it he, just says it just says the- game theory. Yeah, it's like a textbook that he's been reading with his like uh, Steve Jobs glasses. Yeah, that kid's um, you know, he's doing his best. He's doing his best. He's he, working with the material he was given. He was. I've been reading game theory. That's what he says. Yeah, no, he, he, he like he just comes in. He goes. I've been reading game theory. He brings in the box with risk. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of this episode devoted to him playing risk against his dad, the president. Yes. And then the president reaches out to the generals to try to figure out how he to calls play a risk. midnight meeting. Yeah, with the top intelligence brass. And then for a while, the press thinks they're going to invade Australia. Yeah, because he overhears it. Yeah, it's a great episode. Really, just it really got a lot better. Him. Got a lot better. You guys are right. It gets better. I mean, it's the... it's Just the, like that little lesbian daughter I want to tell her right now, it gets better, okay? 1,600 pen and your life. It gets better. But, so that's the subplot, or the B-plot, but the main plot is Josh Gad is creepy, but he's going to go on this date with this woman anyway. Is it creepy, or is... I mean, dude, she's doing everything she... I don't think creepy is the word. She's like, you're out of your mind, and if you say anything you ever say to people, this woman will... No one will fuck you. Yeah. 
And that's the main character of this show, the by main- the way, that we're supposed, <laughs> yeah. we're supposed to tune in every week to be like, what's he going to get into yeah. next? Yeah, it's, see, yeah, it's, he goes on this date with a woman who has already rejected him for some reason, but now she's like, you know what? Josh is my guy. Well, also, who is she related to? I think she works at the White she House. She works at like, oh, okay. the Department of Defense. She's, it's, uh, okay. it's the actress that in the first season of Fargo plays Martin Freeman's wife after his first wife gets murdered. Oh. It's his second wife, yeah. Fargo. Well, here she is dating another fat loser. Here's the thing. You know what became apparent to me in this episode is that Josh Gad is trying to play essentially Charlie from It's Always Sunny, and he's not at all equipped to play that role. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie Day would be very fun in this. Because th- this is Charlie. Yeah. They it's... just threw Charlie in the White House and had Josh Gad play him. Yeah, but the thing about this guy is that you're still... Charlie and Un- Always Sunny, you're never... I mean, I guess there may be moments, but you're generally just like... You're not supposed to feel this like sense of sympathy for him. Where in this show, they're like, hey, he's like a sweet guy. He's a sweet guy who just doesn't get it, you know? Charlie's just like, you know, the Tasmanian devil. This one, they like keep drink. They don't even let him just be crazy. They're like, he deserves love. Like yeah. that's annoying. Just let him be the guy who's like a f- total fuck up and a weirdo. Don't like this. This whole episode, the entire Josh plot was, mom, you're getting in my way of being who I really am, which is like a cool, which is weird a guy that guy. has strong opinions about if Batman can beat up Spider Man. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's a total like Charlie wouldn't be be able to help but scream at someone about that if they challenged and that would that. be funny but yeah. this one it was just like you got to control it and then he you know finally lets loose and then she hates him anyways yeah yeah i it's guess that's the less yeah the lesson to learn is that he's weird and gross and like that yeah the less he he says the lesson he goes at least she rejected me for who i was that was the entire lesson you know what's great america rejected this show for what it is <laughs> <laughs> so he must have felt fine when that happened yeah uh, yeah so yeah jen alvin she's like coaching him through the C- the secret services earpiece yeah they have well okay name. basically he's she this episode starts he's clipping roses in the rose garden and he's he's basically like, I'm going to give this lady the most romantic day yeah. of her but life. But then he starts loading them into balloons. He's going to pop the balloons, which, you know what women love? Loud banging noises. Yeah. That's romance. You the pop a balloon in her face and rose petals fly around. Hitting her with water bottle. <laughs> yeah. Water balloons. Full That's of what they love. So, yeah, he's like, I'm going to give her. And then the mom is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're going to creep her out because you're a weird guy. He was going to say, I love you immediately, which is a telltale sign of a, a virgin. I also, are, we, are we supposed to assume Josh is a virgin in this? No, he has money. He's definitely hired prostitutes. <laughs> he's, hired, <yeah. laughs> he's hired DC yeah. Nightwalkers. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think, I feel like he wouldn't be able, they would like, he would be weird to them. But he just has the Secret Service get them for him. Oh, there you go. And then he, they just show up. That's yeah. a plot we need, like him getting rid of bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I never said he was murdering yeah. them. I mean, I don't know. He's a weird guy. Yeah. They've heard me sing my special song. Yeah. They can't leave the sanctum. <laughs> <laughs> He's got something going on. Uh, jo- he, I mean, his whole... So, yeah, she's like, is talking... He can't do politics. Uh, what, what were all the conversations? Politics, even though you're the president's son, <laughs> and you work... You're talking with a lady in the fucking White House or whatever. Like, sh- you guys apartment. might not bring anything yeah. up that's going on in your lives. Uh, don't bring up politics. Don't bring up religion. And then... And then I think she was like, don't bring up any shit you like, which is like nerd shit, basically. Yeah. She said, keep it light and airy. It would that, be that so funny advice. if, like, yeah, he, she started bringing up, like, working at the Department of Defense. He's like, I don't talk politics, actually. Yeah. But that would have been a joke. And this show has a big rule against jokes. <laughs> <laughs> the most is... jokes are like, oh, look at Josh Gaddy fell over. 
Well, yeah, he rolled onto the couch in a weird way. Yeah. That was annoying immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I hated that when he did the Wait couch minute, gig. Did you work at a bodega on the Lower East Side in 2014? <laughs> You're good to see you again, my friends. It's been a long time. It's been a long, long time. Excellent use of the word my friend. In yeah. That. yeah, that's pure bodega behavior. <laughs> I, was ready, I was ready to see you again. <laughs> uh, so they, yeah, uh, she's just coaching him through all of this and I think the problem is the show is doing it's doing a lot of like uh it wants it's a character uh strength comedy is what it's going for. Like uh like Shits Creek is a character heavy comedy. They're not doing like traditional punchlines, it's not set up punch. It's like look at these characters, look at the weird situation they're in, and that'll be funny based on, you know, us doing that. And then they just don't make any likable characters that you want to hang out with. Speaking of unlikable characters, we have forgotten another plot line in this episode. Which is uh, the daughter who's now with her jock boyfriend. Right. Yeah. Painting the nursery. Painting the nursery. Yeah. And I would describe it as one of the least interesting things I've ever seen. Truly. Well, it was plot. It did add to 22 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It sucked up time. The big thing with them is that he wants sports and Iron Man and his and his dead uncle, and she wants. <laughs> but at she, the end of the episode, Josh Gad somehow knows his uncle. But they're they're. Oh, I mean, it's. Oh, he says he knows that guy. So knows, Josh Gad right. recognizes. Like, is that you're right? I didn't. Is that your uncle? Big ups to your uncle. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. How do you know his uncle? <laughs> well, I guess he, she's been around the fa- He's been around the family for a little bit, I guess. And in that, in in nine episodes, he, they have met his, his uncle. No, his uncle's been dead. So yeah. I think I was gonna say, <laughs> oh, he wait, died yeah, in that why? time. Yeah. I didn't think. I just forgot that he wasn't. I forget he wasn't family. I guess maybe. Well, we don't actually know. There could be a whole incest plot yeah. line that we didn't see. <laughs> Uh, I guess it. I guess maybe this guy has been telling Josh Gad stories of his cool uncle. Yeah, and Josh Gad just really liked it. Yeah, but that would mean that this guy also gave Josh a picture of his uncle. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> like, "This is what he looked know like." Know this man. <laughs> know this man. It. Yeah, I love. I love the idea. The show wouldn't talk about politics, but would talk about incest. The show you're thinking of is Arrested Development. You're right. That is. No, they lo- did a lot about politics. Yeah, yeah. That was. I don't. Yeah, they had a whole Iraq yeah, war. I know. I know. <laughs> Yeah, they, uh, they do a basically paint by square yeah. uh, mural of women in science. Women in science. And he's like, what about Iron Man, babe? Also, just I I feel like those guys, like that was such a. Where did she meet him? A, How old the daughter like supposed to be? Mid late 20s. So she's out of college. So yeah. she just because she's like. Her whole thing was like, I'm an uptight girl who's never done the wrong, the wrong thing, and I did it one time, and now look at me. Was to, which is funny because if you're like, all right, what did you do wrong? Oh, you got raw dog for the first time. This is <laughs> this is what you did. This is the unless you lost your virginity in this episode, what you're saying that you did wrong to your stepmom is I messed up one time. Is like you didn't use a condom. You, you and now you're pregnant. Another weird thing about that first episode that's you just dawning on me is. Well, the first time we see her, she's taking pregnancy tests. Yeah. But then in the next scene, Josh Gad sees her and he knows she's pregnant. Yeah, I didn't get that. I didn't understand that. Is at she all. taking pregnancy tests every day just to make sure she's Isn't... still pregnant? Josh Gad is actually checking the trash. Every yeah. Day <laughs> yeah. He's a little tests. raccoon. Oh, you say he's a he's a trash guy, so he's Charlie from <laughs> It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He love I love sniffing pregnancy tests. Yeah. Pure Charlie behavior, but he just can't pull it off. Yeah, that, I think that's the thing is, like, uh, Charlie seems harmless and Josh Gad doesn't. Yeah. Well, Josh Gad has the nuclear codes in this show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's the real puppet master. Yeah, he's controlling <laughs> Bill from behind the scenes. <laughs> Josh Gad pulling the strings on Pullman. Yeah, truly the main point of this was Josh Gad going on a date. That was the the bulk of this episode was it's a bad... it's teaching him how to date and then going on a bad date and then the date ending with him doing this little musical number down a street yeah. protected by the secret service do you think he created this show because he like saw this actress and thought she was attractive <laughs> like, and wanted to devise a way to go on a date with her in a show maybe he was just like this is my only chance i feel like he could have been like hi i played olaf and froze it not yet i oh. will i'll have a, my career defining moment when I play a weird snowman. I guess he could have been like, hi, I'm, I'm in the Book of Mormon. That probably would have carried some weight at the time. Is yeah. Josh, is but he, it's, that's on. That's does in, he have a family? 
Josh Gad? Yeah. Is he married? Probably. I, I what's have, what's, what's married to the job, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just Married to the fucking game, dude. <laughs> oh, he's married to Billy Crystal. Okay, oh, that's wow. good. Wow, good for Billy. <laughs> Billy's taking on a charity case. Uh, yeah, he has a wife and a family. Okay, yeah, they see twelve year marriage. Well, let me see her. <laughs> All right, <laughs> uh, she kind of matches his vibe. I'm just now imagining Josh Gad, but in a long hair wig. <laughs> No, just, she, she really, long, dude. She looks like uh, <laughs> very like Italian Long Island. She does. She look like she manages. She like co-owns a pizza shop on Long Island. She's got uh, yeah, but not not unattractive. Not unattractive. Just like that kind of like yeah. You're like an Italian mom. Wow, she's six years older than him. We're learning all sorts of stuff about uh, Gad today. Well, we've all kind of run out of shit to say about this show. We're all like, this show sucks. In fairness, the writers ran out of things to put in the show. <laughs> no, we got more on this show because there's a whole date that happens, which is, uh, so she's feeding him through an earpiece, and then she... Well, he, they have to spill wine on his date first so that she has to leave the table so that he can get the earpiece from the Secret Service guy. Yeah. Dude, she in the date. This is how sad this lady was that going into this date. She goes, "I ordered white wine because I knew this was going to happen." Yeah. So you're going in knowing that this klutz is going to fuck you up in some way, <laughs> and it did happen. By the way, a better plot line to like shine some light on reality is: no matter how bad the date goes with him, she should still be like, "I'll date you because you're the president's son." Yes. And I'm in politics. And these connections are invaluable. We need and more, I should use them for all their work. We need more House of Cards vibes in this. Yeah. Where, yeah. Or Josh Gad. Also 2012, the by the way. They debuted this show in the worst possible environment for critics to compare it against. Veep's, Veep and House of Cards had just come out. Oh my god, out. I even oh, think about House, House of Cards, of Cards too. was then yeah. too. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they had the right idea, sort they of. Were they like, were like, politics is big right now. How can we do it in the worst way possible? Let's get Josh Gad on the case. Josh Gad's now. Got- okay, hear me out. House of Cards. Since Kevin Spacey, big problem now, right? Yeah. yeah. We ha- use AI. Get rid of Kevin Spacey. Add in Josh Gad. I love it. Yeah, this is great. I would love to see serious Josh Gad. He no, put- no, he's playing it funny. <laughs> but he does. Is he doing all? Like, does he push that lady in front of the train? Oh yeah, but it, only because he like he yeah. tripped and fell. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> she, con- he, yeah. she conveniently is gone. Yeah. You definitely believe that his wife is like trying to fuck other men at all times. That too. No way, not with that hunk of meat, Josh Gad. That slab of beef. Yeah, hunk of meat, huh? Yep, hunk of meat. Look, I was trying to think of something better. I went for hunk of meat. <laughs> hunk though. of meat. He is a piece of meat. That guy. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. like a ham. Yeah, it's like a ham hock in a window. <laughs> Josh Gad. <laughs> Yeah, you guys really hate this guy. Uh, you know, I, I'm actually starting to feel bad on how much we're bullying him because we've become the frat guys from the start of the episode. <laughs> but I still light my house on fire. Yeah, I get where they were coming from. It's it is funny though. He's taken up like all the because like Bill Pullman. There's a whole like there's a whole other plot about risk where it's like if your kid beats you in risk, if your kid beats you in something, he will no longer see you as a man and will like get you. Yes, like, he will it, see you as a valuable being. That's what the military, the military is like, you can never lose to your son. They'll never respect you after this. Yeah, he became the president. It's like, yeah, dude, I think he's good. I think he's fucking good. Yeah, like, Secret Service will shoot him still. They'll make him disappear. It, uh, yeah. And then he beats him. The kid beats him. Yeah, and he's fine with it. And he's he actually, like, okay. He just doesn't but take it. America didn't respect him as president anymore, and a few episodes later, the show was canceled. Yes. <laughs> You had so. to go back to independent. You had to play a president in Independence Day too. Yeah, the uh, Australians end up nuking America in this show because there was a miscommunication leaked to the press. If that's how the show ends, I would respect. It, it. would be so funny. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> All right, I mean, yeah. Oh, I did like the speech at the end. Like that was a, a decently clever where she's giving the speech to the daughter, and then Josh is giving the same speech, and it starts working. What speech? She's, oh yeah she's talking because the, yeah. they bring up they're like oh what do you like because the writing is like that's the thing is the jokes are bad and like the the whole thing itself is like it's a bad start 
But like, this is like, it's competently written sitcom stuff of like. The only person that would find this show funny is the sort of person that decorates their home with stuff they bought at Cracker Barrel. Just like those wooden American flags that yeah. say something generic. Freedom. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only person that would find this show funny. This is sick. <laughs> yeah, just it, anyone who's getting that level of like, you know, pun just yeah. all over. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's not that funny. That's really at the end of the day. But I did like that once right at the end when he's given the speech and then she's like, I'm into it. And then he calls her the wrong name and then she figures out she's wearing the wire. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay. When the, the yes, I remember this. I truly, yeah. I was ready to, for the show to end. <laughs> I was like, please make this date end. You know what I did like about you? The, you did fall asleep too. I did. I, I watched it this morning. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was two in the morning. I was, was very tired. You were also very drunk. Yeah. You had a giant glass of whiskey. Was it? No, no, that was a beer. Oh, okay. Ladies oh, and gentlemen, gosh, we've shit. entered the David Cry for Help phase of the podcast. <laughs> it was a giggling. I poured it a I glass. I need you guys to uh, write in to us. Um, <laughs> At uh, David has a problem at gmail dot com. Send your emails encouraging him to get better. I love that you saw that. You thought well, I no, had... because I think what happened is that you came in to. Oh, I did have a I did have you, a small whiskey. I had you, like a finger of whiskey. But you were like, I have a glass of whiskey and I have a beer, and I thought that. So then when we watched, I was like, damn, that glass of whiskey is pretty fucking heavy, dude. And then you were, and I turned, and you were just passed out. No, I was exhausted. It was two in the morning. Yeah, I've been up since like seven. And I was yeah. like, God damn! All right. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but okay. Uh, yeah. The end of the episode. She's I. Uh, the date was like uh, the the mom, the stepmom. It's like pleading for Josh. Yeah, it's like he's great. He's just misunderstood, which is the same thing. She, uh, Jen Elfman had to do to the networks. Yeah. Uh, didn't work. Yeah. Canceled immediately. But then the networks and that date were both like. Actually, we just think he's kind of uncomfortable and weird. Yeah, we don't like being around him on set or in this date. It's- He's and not then fun. He shows up with rose petals singing whatever that fucking song. It was a cover of a song. Yeah. Was it at last? No, but it was I, like that. I don't even care. Man, he did, but but he got his vindication because he popped the balloon over his head with rose petals. And didn't work. It though. did not work at all. But I mean, he at least got to do his thing. And then he goes, you know, she rejected me for me. And that's all I want. Anyways, fire her, dad. She didn't have a job after that. He's like, anyways, dad, you have to fire her from the Department of Defense now. Yeah, she just gets moved to like a different country. She's yeah, he's like, yeah, like, yeah, have fun in Iraq, bitch. <laughs> didn't date my son. Fuck you. I'm going to fucking Taliban world now. That is what the show needs. It's just a little bit of darkness. And maybe, I mean, that might be like, because the president ends up, is yeah. so aged so poorly. Like the, the presidency has become such a like weird position now. That we're she, like, this show is not nearly dark enough. Yeah, they should always do like an end credit scene where like she's getting waterboarded in a black site prison somewhere and it's just Josh Gad like with her in an orange jumpsuit and it's like, could have gone on this second date, bitch. Yeah. Is that how you're going to improve the show? Yeah, I think that's a great that way to improve pitch? the show. Yes. End credit scenes where it's just like actual things that were happening in American politics. Like we were during Obama, you know, he never closed Guantanamo. There was all these black sites still. It's just like characters that the the president or his kids didn't like are just extradited to the most horrible corners of the planet and tortured. And how would, and do you want to recommend a show? Do I want to recommend a show? Uh, Seinfeld, huh? Let's go with Seinfeld. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Guys, it's great. Check it it's out. It's a great show. I don't know if you've heard about it. It's a little ditty from the 90s <laughs> when if, we had the greatest president ever. And we haven't seen the comedians, but I'm willing to bet Josh Gad does the same thing that they do in Seinfeld, where he starts off doing bits. Yes. <laughs> he does that on original. He's just singing. Yeah. All right. Uh, for this show, I think you just replaced Josh Gad. With a variety of actors. Let him still be the writer of the show. I actually, I like that more for it. Because then he's just tortured. And then you'll start having that darkness start bleeding into the show. As this character. Honestly, maybe replace him with Jaleel White. Okay. And Sinbad is the dad? Yeah, Sinbad's the dad. President Sinbad again. Oh, I never told you guys my family matters story. Oh, yeah. (laughs) We'll we'll close it out with that. We'll close it out. Okay. I I need to recommend a show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I'm recommending recommend, uh, Friday Night Lights, because that's a good show that talks about politics. I love Friday Night Lights. I'll recommend The West Wing, and I'll say the only way to make this better is um, Times 4 Speed. 
<laughs> so you Damn. make the show better. Five minute episodes. Yep. Anyway, family matters story. So I was just in Atlanta last week and uh, I was doing a bunch of shows and I went over to the Punchline Comedy Club. They have like a Sunday night open mic. And uh, this guy gets up who had been sitting in the audience. He looked, it looked, I thought it was like, I think it was like his first time doing comedy because he like brought, you know, like a handful of people where you're like, okay, uh, why yeah, are you bringing yeah. people on a Sunday night open mic? And it was like a bucket pull. So you get pulled like fifth or something. Mm-hmm. And he's like, He's like this, you know, like well put together black dude. And he's like, you guys may have seen me in your living rooms or your bedrooms. And like, I was just like, okay. Like, I didn't know what he was talking about. I truly thought he was making like a house burglar joke. Like, you've seen me in your houses. You know, I was like, are you saying that you rob people? Or I didn't know what he was getting at. And then he starts talking about like, yeah, my first, he's kind of doing more like a story than like stand up. He's like, yeah, my mom was my first manager. And he still has not said like, of what or what he's done in his past and so all the comics are looking around like what is this fucking guy talking about and then he starts talking about like yeah i was a child star and it turned out it was eddie winslow who was the brother on family matters he was like the attractive brother in like the vest and stuff eddie winslow his name is like darius rucker no, yeah. <laughs> I only want to be with you. <laughs> yes. Uh, but he's there and he's talking about, and so he's just like basically talking about his time as like a child star or whatever. And so we're all like looking him up in the back because we're like, oh, it's this dude. And literally, like the all the stories about this guy are that he's been arrested multiple times for skipping out on child support. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all laughing at, like, kind of in a weird way, being like, oh, he was a very nice guy. But he's just looking for additional revenue streams. Well, he was like, I'm in Atlanta right now shooting a movie. And we're like, okay, like what direct to video movie are you? St- I mean, you know, it's like, what is dude? There is a TMZ article. We're literally reading these articles while he's on stage. Cause he's definitely burning the light, but um, <laughs> he's an actor, man. He has to go. But one of the articles says that he owed the IRS like, ninety thousand dollars and he owed child support for like fifty five thousand dollars and then he told the irs they're like in this article they go he told the irs that he made quote five hundred dollars that year (laughs) which is you could panhandle and make more than five (laughs) hundred i mean the idea that you on paper made five hundred dollars is so funny to tell the government when you owe a hundred and fifty five thousand dollars so the end of his set he had the DJ. There was a DJ for some reason at this open mic. He was also in Family Matters. <laughs> yeah, it was Urkel. Uh, he goes, all right, DJ, play the song. And then he just had him play the Family Matters theme song. <laughs> but I don't know. Do you guys like Family Matters was like, I remember the show. I used to watch it. Yeah. yeah. But I do not remember like word for word. It's not like a, and he, I think, thought that everybody was going to know it. So he's like, he goes, sing along with me. And he just ha- starts singing the theme song, but everybody in the crowd's like, "Bro, we don't know these fucking words." It's a rare condition. So you do. All right. Well, da, da. no, that's all I got. Yeah. So you eventually <laughs> have to go. Da, da. Da, 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 yeah. No. The only time I remember is when it's kind of ending. Goes days go by. Yeah. And it's a rare condition. Yeah. <laughs> and he and it was just really sad to watch this former child star who you know has not made a lot of money is probably not seen his kids in a while because he's not paying bills. He's just and you know, comedy club open mics are already empty, sad affairs. So he's just like, come on, you know, he's like really trying to get us in and no one is singing it. And then he just ends it and gets off stage. <laughs> just think 20 years from now, that's going to be Josh Gad. That, yeah. Come on, sing 1600 Pence theme song with me, everyone. You remember the hit sit- NBC sitcom 1600 Pen? It was just a bunch of like people that were 10 when they saw Frozen yeah. being like, sing the snowman song. <laughs> Do Frozen song now. <laughs> Do Frozen song now. Josh. You guys want to hear a story about the time I met Bill Pullman? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Do you guys ever talk about this? What do you think like cast of shows when 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 they're on a flop show and it ends pretty abruptly like how do you think they do they talk to each other like what the fuck happened or do they do you think they on the inside are like you know like when we do a show we all are like that was a bad show like are they just like yeah we never really saw this one going anywhere because it's a paycheck to them it's a job they're gonna take it well for some perspective are you planning on talking to us after this podcast 
<laughs> I'll talk to you guys. Then there you go. You all have right. your answer. All right. All right. 